The Special Senses, part two. Last little bit for vision. All right. So the visual pathway, how the information gets to the primary visual area. Well, again, we have the retina and the eyeballs. Sends the signal to sensory neurons. They then form the optic nerves that cross over. So the right and left optic nerves cross over to form the optic chiasm. So there's the optic chiasm. And then from there, uh, the reorganized sensory nerves go through tracks to the thalamus. So again, to the thalamus. In the middle is the thalamus. And from there, additional interneurons will carry the information further back to the primary visual area in the occipital lobe. So the primary visual area is in the back of the head, the occipital lobe. All right, moving on to the hearing and equilibrium. So hearing and equilibrium are both found inside the temporal bone in the inner structure of the ear. So there are three big reasons to the ear. The external ear, external ear, part of which you can see and make contact with. So the outer fleshy part that you can get pierced is called the oracle. The canal is called the external acoustic meatus. And at the very end of the canal is the tympanic membrane. Tympanic membrane, you might call it the eardrum, but it is called the tympanic membranes. So the oracle, the ear, acts as a funnel, funneling sound waves into the external acoustic meatus, which then carries the sound waves down to the tympanic membrane. When the sound waves hit the tympanic membrane, they cause it to vibrate. When the, then we have the middle ear. In the middle ear, we have the auditory ossicles, the malleus, incus, and stapes. Uh, the stapes then fits into the oval window, which is a membrane that leads to the internal ear. And we have this tube here called the auditory tube. The auditory tube actually connects the middle ear to the back of the throat, to the pharynx. And this is to allow us to equalize air pressure on both sides of the tympanic membrane. If we were not able to equalize the pressure and it was different between the two sides, that would suppress the vibrations in the tympanic membrane. And that would not be good. So. What do we have happened? The sound vibrations cause the tympanic membrane to vibrate. The tympanic membrane then causes the malleus to vibrate. The malleus then causes the incus to vibrate. And then the incus causes the stapes to vibrate. Stapes fits into the oval window, causing vibrations through the oval window to transmit those pressure waves to the inner ear. And that brings us to the inner or internal ear. The inner or internal ear has this weird shaped bony structure that is in the temporal bone called the um, uh, bony uh, labyrinth. Looks kind of like a um, snail shell with a head and tentacles. It's kind of kind of a crazy looking structure. The snail shell part is the cochlea that houses the structures for hearing. And so the vibrations for, through the oval window are going to be transmitted through fluid in the cochlea to eventually lead to a signal that will get sent through the vestibulocochlear nerve to the brain. And again, the whole internal ear, the bony structure is filled with fluid. All right, so how does it work? We have sound waves hitting the tympanic membrane, causing it to vibrate. It causes the malleus to vibrate, causing the incus to vibrate, causing the stapes to vibrate, causing vibration in the oval window. This then leads to pressure waves in the fluids in the cochlea. The pressure waves will travel along the cochlea until they reach an area where they pass through this membrane structure called the cochlear duct. So basically, the cochlear duct is tuned to different frequencies of vibrations. And when the vibrations get to the right tuned portion of the cochlear duct, it'll pass through, stimulating the spiral organ that is found in the cochlear duct. And it's the spiral organ that has the structures that detect these vibrations that then consider it the stimulus for hearing that gets sent to the vestibular cochlear nerve. And then any extra pressure waves, any extra vibrations will travel through the fluid in the lower chamber and out the round window where it will be dissipated. So here is a cross section of the cochlea over here. So we got the upper chamber, the lower chamber. Here's the cochlear duct, all of them filled with fluid. So again, the, the pressure waves are right, 
cause the uh, pressure waves in the upper chamber, and then at the right portion of the cochlear duct, they will pass through and enter the cochlear duct. Here is the spiral organ. Here's a close-up of the spiral organ. As we can see, the spiral organ has the sheet of uh, cartilage called the tectoral membrane, and then below that, we have these cells holding up what are called hair cells. And the little bitty hair cells are the sensory receptors. And the hairs of the hair cells are embedded in the pectoral membrane. So that when the pressure waves from the vibrations come through, they will hit the tectoral membrane, causing it to vibrate. This vibration will then bend the hairs of the hair cells. And that is the stimulus for hearing, the bending of the hairs of the hair cells. And that makes the hair cells mechanoreceptors because it's the change of in shape that is the stimulus. And then they pass the signal on to the sensory neurons that will lead to the vestibular cochlear nerve. Who knew, right? Well, now you do. From there, the signal going through the vestibular cochlear nerve will travel to the brain stem. And eventually, it's a little more complicated, but eventually it'll make it to the thalamus. And then from there, the signal will be sent to the temporal lobe, to the primary auditory area of the temporal lobe. As you can see, it's a little more complicated for hearing. And actually, the hearing from one ear, the signal gets sent to both the right and left temporal lobes so that we're actually detecting the sensation you hear from one ear in both temporal lobes. And of course, for the other ear, as also in both temporal lobes. But the key thing is, it goes to the brainstem, from there to the thalamus, from there to the primary auditory area. Then we have equilibrium, the structures for equilibrium. We have two different kinds of equilibrium. First one we're going to talk about is static equilibrium. Static equilibrium is basically um, letting you know where gravity is, how gravity is pulling on your body, or to be more exact, pulling on structures in your head, specifically structures in the vestibule. So the vestibule houses the structures for detecting static equilibrium. So basically what we have is this gelatinous structure called the autolithic membrane. It has little, little crystals in it called autoliths. And this gelatinous structure is right above a series of cells, including hair cells. And the hairs of the hair cells are embedded in the autolithic membrane. And so when you change the tilt of your head, look down, look up, whatever, this will cause the gelatinous mass, the autolithic membrane, to ooze in that direction that gravity is now pulling on it. That oozing will then bend the hair cells, the hairs of the hair cells. And again, mechanoreceptors, it's the bending of the hairs that is the stimulus, and again passes on to the vestibular cochlear nerve. And then the second kind of equilibrium we can detect is dynamic equilibrium. Dynamic equilibrium is the um, movement of our body, of our body moving rotationally. So here we have ice skater, ice skater spins, really starts messing with her dynamic equilibrium, and then she stops spinning. So we, we can tell the difference between when we're spinning and we're not, and what direction we're spinning in the three dimensions that we live in. Um, the structures that house um, the structures for uh, dynamic equilibrium are the semicircular canals, so three loops going in three different directions three dimensions of space, as it were. And within the semicircular canals are structures called cupulas. And a cupula is a cartilaginous structure, and it is lying above cells, including hair cells. And wait for it, the hairs of the hair cells are embedded in the cupula. And as I mentioned, the internal ear is all filled with fluids, so we have fluid in the semicircular canals. So that when you start to spin, to turn really quickly, um, it'll cause the fluid to move, to flow in that direction. And as the uh, fluid flows through, it will hit the cupula, causing the cupula to bend. When the cupula bends, it'll cause the hairs of the hair cells to bend. And the hair cells are mechanoreceptors, so it's the bending of the hair of the hair, hairs of the hair receptors that is the stimulus. They will then transmit that signal to sensory neurons. They'll then send the signal to the vestibular cochlear nerve. And that is it for this lecture.